This is the Toshiba Portage R930 laptop reviewed for 2023 and onward. Now this model in particular features an Intel Core i7-3540M CPU at 3.0 GHz and the integrated graphics of Intel HD 4000 particular to the third generation Intel series. At the moment I have 8 GB of Samsung DDR3 1600 MHz RAM installed dual channel. Um, it would do well to have 16 GB, but I just don't have that in stock at the moment. And for the SSD Windows 10 64-bit boot drive, I have a 256 GB KingFast solid state drive. And this came installed with an Intel Centrino Advanced N 6235 Wi-Fi card. And I think it still holds up in 2023. I get some pretty fast internet speeds. And you probably will too, if you have a good internet package. The laptop features a fairly standard keyboard that is fairly responsive. And uh, it's not the best keyboard in the world, but it certainly is far from the worst. I have a fine time typing on it and it works for me. I find the touchpad to be quite pleasant with multi-touch control supporting two finger scroll, pinch, flip and rotate and featuring a separate touchpad on and off button right up here in case you're using a mouse or your hand brushes over it I guess and also left and right click here as well as a fingerprint reader in the front. As for the case itself, it's a black magnesium chassis with brushed metallic finish and a matte black keyboard, which I failed to mention earlier. And the display panel is what I would call pretty standard for the time, a 1366 by 768 HD display, 13.3 inches. Now on the right I.O. we have an SD card reader, and below that is the CD slash DVD RW optical drive headphone and microphone input, USB 3.0, and an RJ45 Ethernet port. And also what I assume on the far end is some variation of the Kensington lock. On the left I.O. we have the power cable or the power adapter input, a grill for the air exhaust from the CPU fan, a VGA display port, eSATA port, another USB 3.0 and a nice little feature, an HDMI port so you can hook it up to your HD TV if you desire without the use of adapters. Here on the bottom of the laptop we have our 6 cell lithium ion battery and we also have easy access for the two dim slots under this one panel and our 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD bay right here. Just two Phillips head screws to remove. Over here we have our air intake for our CPU fan. And over here we have a Express Card 54 slot. And we also have the port for a docking bay right here. A fairly typical 720p 1.3 megapixel webcam. Good enough. I found that uh, general use uh, web surfing and light multitasking is very responsive with this laptop. I'm actually rather impressed. It boots up very fast and I find that web browsing is very responsive. You can get to looking up pictures of cats really fast. Um, YouTube videos load just fine. I do find the integrated speakers to be fairly basic, although of course we do have access to Bluetooth to install the RAM and solid state drive into a Toshiba Portage. It does make the listening experience substantially better to have a somewhat decent Bluetooth speaker. So I have my gaming SSD attached via USB 3.0. All right, so I'll be testing out Fortnite in windowed full screen 1366 by 768 native resolution to the laptop uh frames per second around 120 i don't think we'll get that high and of course the rendering mode 
uh, performance, lower graphic goal fidelity. Um, so we'll see how well this game can run on pretty much the pretty close to the lowest settings. I might have to adjust it, but we'll see. Alright, so poor video quality just recording off screen. Um, let's see if we can get any kind of performance once the map fully loads. Because right now we're sitting at a uh, low of 8 and a high of 17 frames per second, which is not good. Let's see if we can make this playable. So right now it's uh, hovering around the mid 20s for frames per second. Uh, 30s, 40s, which means just moving around is possible. Uh, so I'm gonna find. Oh, I'm gonna find a gun. I think somebody is about to shoot me. We'll see. Of course, all I can find is a sniper rifle. So somebody just shot at me. I'm not. I, maybe that was just the door opening. All right. I don't know how I manage that, but. As you can see, there's a lot of lights flashing around. All right, so I'm surprised I lasted that long. The frames per second aren't great. I would call this just barely playable. And uh, you know, I'll say it this much, it's playable in a pinch. I really have to hand it to the game developers of Fortnite making this game pretty much playable on so many different devices, including this one. So kudos. So next up we'll try some Bioshock Infinite and pretty sure this game should run okay as I played it on my HP laptop around the time it came out and I believe it had the same integrated GPU as well as uh, i5 instead of an i7. So here we have uh, graphics on full screen, 1280 by 720 uh, quality level set to very low. This is what it auto loaded as, and I think we'll just try it out like this. So the opening cutscene actually looks pretty good. Um, I forgot that starting this game is a series of cinematics and not a lot of action gameplay. So I think I'll just test out a little bit of running around and we'll see how it goes and that'll give us a uh, good enough insight as to how this game will run. All right, so we're able to freely move around now. You know what, uh, it's pretty much what I expected. This game is pretty well optimized to play on the system um, without any screen tearing or uh, really poor performance. I don't think I'm gonna spend too much more time playing this game because of all the cinematics, but I think from this footage alone, we'll just have to assume that it's totally playable. I was taking a look at my games list and there's a whole bunch of games here that would be really good for the system, such as Half-Life, Half-Life 2, all these different Half-Life games. Uh, we have uh, Dark Forces 2, Star Wars, uh, Jane Silent Bob, Marlboro, just a easy 8-bit game, King Rabbit, easy puzzle game. Uh, but for right now, I would like to test out Left 4 Dead 2 as uh, the final game test. The opening cinematics always look good in this game and it generally fills me with a false sense of hope. So I'm actually going to restart this and put the frames per second counter on. Alright, so we're looking at a full screen 1360, oh sorry, windowed, no border, 1366 by 768 display and a mixture of low and medium graphic settings. All right, so that false sense of hope I felt at the beginning is actually, uh, turns out to be not so bad. Uh, we're sitting at over 60 frames per second at the moment. I'm thinking that's going to be pretty consistent throughout our experience. Let's see how it goes once we exit the safe room. As usual, the gun is very loud, so I need to take my headphones off. So we're still sitting at 60, over 60 frames per second, occasionally going into 70, um, 75, 82, 81. We're now getting as high as frames per second in the 80s, and that is honestly much more than I expected from this game, and much more than I personally need to play it. So you can definitely mark this game 
on the playable list. And it, yes, it is still a lot of fun. So overall, I think that the Toshiba Portage R 930 laptop would be a pretty solid choice for a budget in 2023 and onward. Of course, you're not going to be doing some heavy computing or heavy gaming on this device, but I do believe that it will offer a good light experience as in light photo editing, light video editing. I could probably edit this video perfectly fine using the Movavi software that I currently use right now. And as far as just general work, I could definitely see myself using this at my job, um, university, etc. So thanks a lot for watching and hopefully this answers some of your basic questions about the laptop. And if you're wanting to go a little bit more in depth, just leave me a comment and ask me some questions. And if you feel like I missed something pretty important, just let me know. and. I will either pin the comment or discuss with you in the comments. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.